Howdy, howdy, everybody. It is Wednesday, August 19th, 2020. Welcome to the Remodeler's Show, hosted by Kyle Hunt. Listen to the whole thing. There we go. A little, int- little intro music. I just played that and tested it, and the dog started barking because I'm working from home. So I just sent her outside, but we're managing. We're managing just fine today. I've got some, not that I don't put good thought into this every time, but I just thought a little bit further, maybe a little bit of extra 5P for today's show. And I'm looking forward to it. Hope you all are doing well. We're going to start with the old one word open. Share with me, if you would, kind of your one word open. It's one word that's kind of on your mind today. And I would love to get your questions today. All right. Excellent. So let's do a little. From a coaching call. From a coaching call. This is from earlier today. And you may be thinking or experiencing these things yourself right now. And uh, this client of mine is not the only person that I've heard this from. And what he said was, man. Lead time, lead time on materials have been going up. He was given some examples of cabinetry that used to be four or five weeks, taking seven or eight weeks. Flooring lead times have doubled. And he wasn't even talking yet about the price side of things, how things have been escalating on that front. Um, with with everything that's that's going on, the ordering of materials, the lead time of materials. Um, how we sign a fixed price contract and then have material prices go up. There are some challenges there. There are some concerns there. Our ability to schedule clearly and say, you know, we are going to be able to start your project on this date and time is a little bit more predicated and challenged by our material lead time. So a few things come to mind related to that. One, what is in your contract related to price escalation? Do we have something written in there to protect yourself if things um, increase a certain percentage? That's one thought that you need to kind of consider and think about. Um, The biggest thing to me comes down to communication. Oh, so often there are so many parts of the remodeling process that either go well or don't go well. And it ties back into communicating in an excellent way with all the parties involved. That's just a good reminder right there. Um, But in particular, when it comes to the lead time on things, when it comes to perhaps increased pricing based on materials, I've I've been seeing some posts on different boards related to just flat out two by four pricing. Somebody posted the other day about, um, you know, the the cost that they had written down in for May and then in June and then July, then August and how much it has increased. So we need to stay on top of that. We need to be probably in communication more than ever with some of our key lumber suppliers or lumber yards or wherever you get your materials. We need to protect ourselves a bit by updating our contract language and we need to communicate with our clients. We don't want them to be surprised. We don't want them to hear you say, you know, we need to hold off on starting your project for another two weeks because we're having some issues with the delivery of materials and that be the first time they hear about it. They frankly, they shouldn't be surprised by that because you've already prepped them. You've already had the advanced conversation that this is something that could happen. So it's something that came up during a a call this morning and it just reminds me of the importance to communicate, communicate, communicate. So hopefully that's a good reminder for you as you're navigating these treacherous waters, choppy waters that we're going through right now. Okay, next one up. Let's see here. We got some. Uh, we got some comments. We got some comments, people. Um, we got some likes. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? Um, all right. Next one up is from around the interweb. Around the interweb. Oh, if you look closely, you can see my children in the background. I've had some Wi-Fi issues because they've been on devices this morning, and I basically said, "You guys are going to disappear between twelve and twelve thirty. Behave yourselves, but get outside and do not come inside." Oh, and what do we hear? We hear a door opening. Oh, that's just one of the children bringing the dog in because the dog must be annoying their volleyball game that they have going. My, uh, I'll, I'll actually, let me forward, let me skip skip forward to something else I was going to say because I'm talking about it right now. 
slow down. So this morning, I've got, I've had a busy day. I've got a busy afternoon. And then I've got this thing called the remodeler show from 12 to 1230. And I'm trying to manage three of our four children today, plus the dog, plus get lunch going. My wife is um, this week needing to do some teacher training, getting ready to go back to school. So she's doing that. So I'm home um, kind of holding down the fort, plus keeping a business going. And I think I was, plus I have a rib injury, plus I'm hurt on top of that. And I think I was feeling just like a, ugh, too much, too much. Um, but it just reminded me to slow down. Slow down. It's going to be fine. Take one thing at a time. Do the best you can. Things might not go perfectly. And that's okay. Um, and when I started to slow down, what was kind of interesting is I spent just I had a little 20 minute break in between meetings and just spent some time thinking, okay, what's the most valuable thing for me to cover on the show today? What would truly actually help people? And that helped me craft what I was going to write in there. Um, the other thing that came to mind is when you slow down a little bit and you evaluate your workload and your day, what's going well, what's not. And you look at that in a broader sense, if you have been too busy haven't been able to catch up. And it's just like that for weeks and weeks and months and months and months. You got to look at that and say, what needs to change in order for me to feel a little bit better in control? When I started thinking about that for my business, something that I absolutely love doing is creating content to get creative with it. There's so many little videos, clever things, ways of teaching content, ways of promoting my products that are, that are float around. But I don't have a ton of time to do that. And I was reminded as I slowed down, hmm, I got to keep looking at my schedule and figuring out how to carve out and add more time, <clears throat> add more time so that I can do more of that because I just love doing it. And it's very important for my overall business. So just this reminder, I don't know exactly what it means for each of you guys, but this thought of slow down, think a little bit, don't beat yourself up. Uh, for, you know, for not having everything all figured out um, and just take it one thing at a time. Enjoy the work that is in front of you at that moment and plan your day. A properly planned day also helps keep stress level down. So there's that. Now going back to uh, uh, around the interweb. Oh, the people are quiet today on the remodelers. So I see I see that you guys are live there. Oh, here we got some comments going on. All right. Um, love this seven minutes and definitely needed that reminder. Ooh, excellent. Excellent. Um, Joanne, if you go to, um, and Kevin and Joanne, ooh, okay, now I'm getting some feedback. You guys are giving me some energy. Um, one, if you go to streamyard.com slash Facebook, it'll tell you the steps that you just click a few buttons so that I can see your name. Uh, pop up in the StreamYard app. So if you could do that, StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Um, but yeah, we need that reminder. We need to slow down. Um, and then Kevin was pretty much saying the same thing. Good info. I needed to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, today's show was, was totally worth it. Just to the fact that hopefully there's more people that didn't comment that also um, are just helped by that reminder. What else would I add to it? I feel like I covered it pretty in depth, but um, man, we just let our emotions get the best of us and we turn a bad half hour into a bad day or because we're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, it just eats up, eats us up, spits us out. We got to fight against that. We got to keep proper perspective on things. We have to slow down. We have to admit if we're not able to get something done. Maybe we call a client and say, look, I know I was supposed to get this done this afternoon, but it's not looking good to do that. And I need to uh, reschedule this for you know tomorrow. Take some of the pressure off sometimes. StreamYard is temperamental with me, Kyle. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Slow is fast. Um, there's Tate. Tate, the featured guest from yesterday's uh, the, uh, the Remodeler Show. Yeah, slow is fast. Isn't that interesting? You know, we, we talk about multitasking so often, and, and I would say that I, uh, I love the idea of multitasking. There is few things, there are several things, but there are a few things that bring me more joy than coming down early before everybody gets up, having, a, this is going to sound weird, having a load of laundry going, having the dishwasher going, and getting some work done. Did you hear that? That's three things happening at the same time. Woo! I, literally, I love that. 
I'm like, man, I'm uber productive. And sometimes our uber productiveness will make us frantic and chasing around and going and going crazy. What Tate said there is very true. Sometimes slowing down helps you go faster, right? Move quickly. Don't rush. Some good, some good stuff there, my friends. All right. Excellent. Cool. Um, so let me get into this uh, from a coaching call. If I can go back to that. Um, actually, I hit on that around the interweb. This is something that was on the remodelers community board yesterday. The remodelers community has been bumping lately, has been hopping. Just a lot of good topics, a lot of good, pe a lot of good things people have been sharing. Um, and Tom Lizzo, I think is his last name. Uh, Tom wrote this yesterday and I wanted to read what he wrote. I wanted to read some of the replies. I just pulled out a few of the replies because I think it's just good for um, you guys to hear. And then I had some of my own thoughts that I wanted to add to it. But Tom said this, here's a question for all you design build professionals. I have a meeting tomorrow, my third, where I will be asking for a professional services agreement slash retainer. The contractor I'm competing with has been around, quote unquote, forever. He does a good job. I do not believe they ask for any kind of retainer or professional service agreement. He is old school, and I feel he has a staff to cover the budgeting relatively easily and therefore may not ask for a fee. May not. Might do this. I'm hearing a lot of may or mights. The architectural plans are done, so it's about being professional, the report, and the detailed pricing. Since I cannot see myself getting to a tight budget, meaning a wow. detailed budget. ruh -ro, Lucy's barking. Lucy, stop it. We're trying to conduct a professional show over here. A tight budget without bringing some of my trade partners in. I feel I must stick to my system, which is to get some skin in the game. Tom's system is to charge for the service that he provides, which is professional budgeting, detailed budgeting. And his thought here is, are there any words of wisdom? Should they, the customer, potentially push back on my request because the other guy doesn't require the same? Fair question, right? One thing I'm hearing in that is just, you know, some, some maybes. There's a lot of time being spent on thinking about the competition. And it's wise as a good salesperson to think about who we're competing against. But often we can maybe do that too much. We can think too much about the competition. We can, well, they might be doing this. They might be doing that. And, and time spent, if you have five minutes that you spend thinking and maybe what ifs related to the competition, that's five less minutes, precious minutes, limited minutes, you're a busy remodeler, that you don't have to brainstorm how you can best present why you charge what you charge, to do some batting practice and some rehashing of how am I going to most effectively present this? And that's a real thing. We exchange time that's not as valuable in exchange for not spending it on time that's more valuable. So even that example, I think, is a good reminder for us. Plus this idea that all right, Lucy, Lucy the dog is demanding being, pet, being petted. So I'm going to manage comments. I'm going to be reading this. I'm going to be doing a show and I'm petting the dog. Didn't we just get done talking about how that we shouldn't multitask? We should focus on one thing. I feel like I'm excelling at it right now. Okay. So here's some feedback from the people to um, Tom's situation and his questions. Bob Peterson said, ask them if they're okay with an estimate, quote unquote, and change orders, or do they prefer an exact cost? Point blank question, right? The more planning that goes in up front, the less surprises the less change orders. And when you ask that question, it 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 starts to educate them on why you do what you do. Um, Sean said, believe in your value and process and don't apologize. There is a good percentage of our success in selling that is tied back in with what he's hitting at there. One, having a very clear, thought out, proven process that we follow. And two, the confidence to really sell it. Confidence is one of these intangible things that can make a huge difference in turning more of your prospects into pain projects. Confidence. So what Sean is saying there is, Tom, you've got this. Believe in, your, in the value of your process and don't apologize. Some good advice. Um, another Sean said, your process is your process for a reason. That's good. Your process is, a, is your process for a reason. There's a reason that Tom charges for this. And there's, right, there's a ton of reasons um, that we do this more design build or we charge for the service that he's providing. Do not deviate unless you are 100% sure the benefits outweigh the risk. And even then, it's probably not wise to deviate. If they do bring up an objection, 
Just let them know it is how you operate so you can best serve all of your clients and your company slash team. Don't be afraid to remain completely silent at that point and wait for them to respond. Oh, that pregnant pause after you make a statement. Sometimes we steamroll right through that and we keep talking where there's great power in that pause. Excellent. Um, Aaron said a tight, um, this is him kind of giving uh, Tom some words to use. This is good stuff, right? These are good reminders. This is all related to how do we charge for project design and development? How do we protect our time? How do we make sure that we are, we got some skin in the game on the other side? How do we build value so that the homeowner actually realizes the value in this and, and says, well, that makes a lot of sense, right? Also tied in with this whole topic is, you know, how do we, how do we deal with the competition and the head trash that we have that says, I can't charge for this if other people aren't charging, you know, or is my process fair? You know, should I be doing this? Lucy, you gotta go, dude. You're distracting me. Go. Adios. Adios, amiga. Okay. All right. Um, Aaron said a tight and accurate budget will involve at least several days of labor and involvement of several of my trade partners. I believe that work results the results of the actual project are as good as the work, the prep work that goes into them. And that free work up front in the planning is never as considered or detailed or solid as paid work. I wanna make sure that we begin well and that means having the most accurate, detailed budget and specifications possible. Sell it, explain it to them. When you explain it like that, your ideal client will kind of, well, why aren't they doing that? Oh, we're going to have a lot of change orders. We're going to have a lot of allowances. We're going to have a lot of unknowns. I can see how this project's going to turn into something that the schedule, you know, goes on and on or that there's all these changes that come up or last minute decisions. And man, he talked to me the other day about how ordering materials early is very important right now because of delays, et cetera. So some really good thoughts there. Um, again, if you go to remodelerscommunity.com, if you're not part of Remodelers Community, if you're listening to this recording via the podcast a couple of weeks later, um, check out remodelerscommunity.com. Um, this is a post. This post was from um, August the 18th. Oh, Bailey said, move quickly, don't rush. I need this reminder constantly. That's because your boss is always moving too quickly and rushing. That's me, by the way. Um, two more things on here. The lesson here, Mike Medford said, the lesson here is to ignore the competition. Learn to be the authority and to be the competition and you to be the competition. Learn from the battles you lose, keep improving, and you will win in the long run. Um, and Robbie Edwards said, see the client, um, sell the client on the fact that most who do this for free are quickly in and out and typically don't invest the time needed to be thorough. When a contractor is not thorough, this means gray areas and surprises down the road for the clients. The benefit of paying your firm a deposit is fill in the blank. Um, there's, there's also, there's also um, one more from Ryan. The best advice I can give is this, forget the other guy. It will only cause you undue pressure and will cause you to change your process, which in turn will not make you the remodeler the previous client referred. It's good stuff. Um, if you go to remodelersontherise.com and you go back to the May 21st, 2020 episode, um, it's a clip from one of my courses that gets into the benefits that the homeowner has, not us, but the homeowner has in paying for design and project development. Um, that will give you additional ammo and confidence and thoughts related to how you can continue to improve selling this. Um, the other thing you see that on the bottom there, it says course offering the fall remodelersmasterclass.com. This is the topic we're going deep into um, in October. So consider signing up for that. All right, good, excellent, wonderful. Next thing I wanna do is share my screen like so and show you guys uh, just a few of the things from the Remodeler's Vault. I thought if you guys could see this, uh, some of you who maybe don't have access to this will request access. Um, and also, I just wanted to—I just pulled out a few examples that might be helpful for you guys to see and they might consider implementing. So this, Lucy, Lucy, come here. If you have to have me pet you in order to survive this next nine minutes, we will do that. Okay. Um, if you go to remodelersvault.com, it is a free thing that we've set up. A lot of people have, remodelers have submitted different uh, 
different items that you can uh, see and download and start customizing and use just different templates, tools, resources. These are the different categories they're under. I pulled out four. This first one is from Rhonda. Thank you, Rhonda. I think a couple of these I'm going to show is from Rhonda. She stepped up and submitted a bunch of stuff for the old vault. Um, this one is a simple one. It's this idea of planning your day. And the way Rhonda has this puts date on there, her daily big three, most important tasks slash greatest impact. Spending a little bit of time planning that, identifying that. And the other way that I put it sometimes is, is identify your frog, eat your frog, the most important thing that you're most likely to put off. Identify and put down and write down those daily big three. When you write something down, it increases the chance of it actually happening. When you keep it up in your head, it lowers the chance of it actually happening. Scientific fact. I'm sure there's been studies on it. So it's not scientific because if it was scientific, there'd be studies on it for sure. But I just know it to be true. Um, and then we have other here, other tasks, other things that are on the radar for today. And down here, done is a check mark. Slash is waiting for and probably be waiting on somebody. The zero is delegate. The arrow is defer, meaning, okay, we don't need to do this today. We're going to do it another time. And the X is delete. You know what? Now that I think about it, we don't need to do this. Um, so that's just a simple little tool. That's in the old vault. Um, this one is one of many that Paul McManus had submitted called um, different, just different checklists. The one I pulled here is just site prep. He's got this list of different things. Now they... Um, integrated into their builder trend. Does he use builder trend or co-construct? I can never remember. Um, his builder trend where he's got this checklist in there, but this thought that whether it is the drywall stage, the demo stage, the trim stage, the site prep stage, the job closeout stage. Yes, I know I didn't do that in order. I may not be a remodeler, but I could put that in order if, if I tried again. Um, so don't make fun of me. But the site prep checklist, oh man, when we don't have a checklist, running a successful remodeling business is about doing a lot of little things right. Having a, an exceptional experience for your remodeling client has to do with a lot of little things right and executing those things. And when you are relying on your team to remember everything, when you have all of the things up here in your head and you're trying to remember things, it is so much harder than if you have a checklist. Even if you are by yourself, and Kyle, I'm a one-man show. I'm doing the work. I'm doing the office, et cetera. Even if that's the case, create a checklist. I remember doing that in my business when it was just me. And I'm like, this is kind of stupid. Why would I make a checklist when I bring on a new client? I just am doing it myself. But wouldn't you know it, it required a lot less brain power. And I was more consistent in making sure all the little things that I want to do got done. So in the vault, there's all these different checklists. When people saw these, they, they really liked it. You can grab these, make it your own, put it in a format that works for you and start using it. That That's um, in the remodeler's vault. I think it's under da, 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 other uh, field production in that category. Um, another one here, certificate of completion. You know, this idea of we want to finish the project strong. And here's a little certificate of completion that, you know, everybody signs off on, that we go through and we check off all the different things that need to happen. Um, the customer signs off on it. What a strong way to finish a project. So that's in the in the vault. And then another one is this little spreadsheet here. Um, this is one that I tossed in there. And it's, it's simple and it's really focused on what is our backlog of work? What does it actually look like? And the way I like to approach that is this month, next month, the following month. And not any further than that as far as, especially when we deal with the specifics. This month, next month, the following month. So if my goal um, of for sales, of produced sales each month, was let's say $80,000. When I line up the jobs that I have sold, not that I think I'm gonna sell, but that I have sold, and I put the total sale next to it, and then I think through the schedule and I say, all right, on that hunt job, that $50,000 project, how much of that revenue am I expecting in November? How much in December? How much in January? And I put some thought into it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It never will be perfect. But I put that in there and I plug in those numbers for all the jobs I have sold. Again, not that I think I have sold, but that I actually have sold. And when you do that, if my goal was $80,000 a month that I need to sell and, and produce in this case, and this is showing me at 75000 I know that I'm a little below. I'm not going to freak out about it, but it's good to be aware of that. I'm actually ahead of the game in December. And when I look into January, 
you know, I see, okay, I need to be around 80. I'm at 30. Now that's not going to panic me because I'm still two months out, but it is going to light a little bit of fire under my butt to get projects through the design and development and get them to signed status. This is just a tool that really helps you kind of tie in a little bit of your backlog, a little bit of your overall sales goal. Again, lights a fire under you a little bit, helps you look at your overall schedule. Um, and it's just a simple tool that works. So all of these, I just wanted to pull out a few examples. One, because I thought it would be helpful um, just to see some of these examples and to consider using them. And also just to shine some light on the value and the different items that are in this vault. Uh, again, remodelersvault.com. Um, if you haven't signed up yet, it's free of charge. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you to everybody who submitted stuff. We got a lot of good stuff in there. Um, and also you'll see on there where you can uh, submit new stuff. We'd love to continue to add to it. All right, so that is that. Is that. Let's see what else we got. Um, that we got in here. Well, one thing that we're going to start doing, this is fun, a little question of the day. This means when you hear me say, here's the question of the day, you get your fingers ready and you type an answer to the question of the day. That's how this works. Simple, fun, and adds just another little bit to the old, uh, to the old show. Question of the day. What year did you start your business and why did you start it? What year did you start your business and why did you start it? Inquiring minds want to know. Does Lucy have something to say to the people? I don't know. She's just being annoying. There she is. There's, there she is in all of her schnauzer glory. Hi, guys. I'm needy. I couldn't possibly lay over there. I need to jump up on dad's lap. Yes. I think what she's saying is, Dad, when mom's home, she gives me more attention. Why are you not giving me more attention? That's what she's saying. Well, Michael's playing Michael's playing the question of the day game. Keep it up. It'll be fun to kind of go back and see what you guys all type in there um, in the comments. Cool. So if we were to if we were to kind of think, you know what? I think it's probably the It's the two minute warning. It's the two minute warning. If it's a two minute warning, you know, um, yes, answer the question of the day or also what did you learn today? And this is also an opportunity for me to just kind of recap the show. I hope you got some value from it today, folks. Thank you for the comments and for chiming in. Um, you know, the lead time on materials that, we were, that we're seeing, how they're extending, the increases in materials, you all know it's happening. You've been notified by your suppliers, you know it's happening. Are, are you protecting yourself in your contract language? And are you over communicating with your suppliers so that you know what's going on? And also with your clients, they should not be surprised when you have to approach them about a schedule change. They should not be surprised when you do approach them and say, look, it went over that 10% escalator. And you know, as we talked about, we're gonna need to add to the cost of the project, just the sheer material costs. Um, we need to be communicating with them. Don't ignore it. It's out there. It could be getting worse. Some people say it might be okay. It depends on where you're at in the country. It depends on the products we're talking about, but be proactive with that. Don't be back on your heels related to that. Okay. Um, cool. Um, Garen, coming in from LinkedIn. I love that. We are, we are live on YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook. Love seeing uh, somebody seeing uh, here on LinkedIn. I don't know what he was laughing about unless it's when I was holding up uh, Lucy. Uh, started the business 2008 at the height of the Great Recession because I lost my custom home builder PM job. Well, there you go. Um, Garen, I started in 2008 too. So I uh, I feel your pain looking back and I'm like, wow, that was, that was ballsy. Quit your job, start your business right in the middle of the Great Recession. But here we are, Garen, look at us. Look at us. 2011, I wanted more fulfillment. Hmm, that's cool. Um, that was Kevin. Um, now, the reason I'm still in the industry is totally different. So, Michael, share share that. Um, Michael started back in 95. I could, there's Piper. She's like, Dad, I just looked at my clock. It's 1231. Why can't we come back in yet? I could do a better job than the guy I was working for. I stayed with the business because it was a way to create and get paid. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Keep uh, Rob Auer, 1972. Loved carpentry. Rob, you're, you're one of those guys that started the business because you love to do what you do. And then you realized, oh, there's a lot to this business thing. And in Rob's case, you know what Rob did better than the great majority of people? 
oh, he dug in and he became an even better businessman than he was even a carpenter. Maybe that's not fair, Rob, but I think it's it's highlighting what I want to highlight is that, um, you know, yes, you can be great at what you do. And maybe you started your business because you knew you could do it better. But that skill as a business person, a businessman or woman, we've got to just work to be just as good on the business side as we are on the craft craftsmanship side. Right. Excellent. Cool. All right, guys, it's two after the time allotted. We will see you again tomorrow for another episode of the remodeler show. Have a wonderful afternoon and slow down me with you. <laughs>